guys, it's old Terry Terry here again. Listen, today I want to talk to you about grace. Not a girl, but the concept. Let's look at the scripture called. It is, let's see, I don't have the wrist. Oh, well, I'll just read it to you. It says, and of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, you know, there's a real kind of a strangeness that comes with the word grace. Um, you know, we think that if we just accept Jesus Christ, that that's, that's it. And it's true. It is it. But then out of that grace should come the grace to become what, uh, what God calls us to be. And at least the desire to want to try. So grace for grace is kind of the tricky thing. I'm going to write it up here. Here's grace. I'm going to write it G-R-A-C-E, grace. And I'm going to put four here. And then I'm going to write grace up here. Because this is what the phrase we're going to kind of open up. We're going to look at it through Jesus' eyes. So in this particular case, the word for, I have a number there, but you know what I mean, right? Okay. Grace for grace. Uh, the next phrase is kind of goofy because it says, in most of the translations, it says this. For the law was given by Moses. And then they do a dumb thing. I think it's a dumb thing. I know it's a dumb thing. They insert this word, but. I'll put it right there, but, B-U-T. They insert a but, <laughs> they insert a but. And that, that insertion right there kind of changes the flow of the sentence. Let me read it to you again. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now that absolutely stands in opposition to what the first line says. It says that he gave us grace for grace. The word but should not even be in there. Why? Why, Terry? What's the problem? What are you, what are you driving at here, woman? Well, I'm driving at this. Is that when we put the word but in there, it sounds like the law was given by Moses. But Jesus Christ gave us grace. But. The but messes things up. But it wasn't in the original language. The issue becomes now that we are able to say, well, I'm not under the law. I don't have to follow any rules. And uh, this is, you know, like I'm just under grace. What happens is then people get greasy. They get greasy with grace. And when you're greasy with grace, you don't even reach to be like him. So what, what we have here is, then what this adds to then is that we have this thing called replacement theology. Well, God gave the law to, the, to Moses and Israel and they just didn't do it, so he divorced them. And now he's married to us. Wrong. Because if he divorced his first wife, what makes you think he wouldn't divorce the church if she messes up? God says that he gave us the law, and I'll put that up there too, since I find another color. I think I'll try. This looks green to me, but I'll looks white on the screen. I don't know. Okay, this grace was the teacher or the law. If you've listened to any of my teachings, the word teacher is really the word Torah. And then it's often mis-kind of guidedly translated as the law. So it says... He gave us this grace so that we would be able to receive, forgetting the word but, so that we would be able to receive this grace. And I separated those by a different little circle there. I am given the law, the Torah, the teacher. It sets the stage for me to understand what grace is. And that's what Jesus was saying there. He says, the fullness you've received. It was grace for grace. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because Jesus wasn't the least bit remotely aware that he was coming in opposition to Moses. I know because I'm going to quote him, okay? John 5, 46 says, Hey, guys, if you were believing Moses, you would be believing me. And if you don't believe his writings, how are you going to receive my words? If you don't receive this, how are you going to receive this? It was grace for the grace that was coming in Jesus. Then in John 5, another kind of a proof, proof that Jesus didn't stand in opposition to the law. He instead said, don't think I came to destroy that. I didn't come to destroy that. 
or the prophets. I like all that. I'm not come to destroy, but I'm come to fulfill. Now that doesn't mean just he fulfills it and we're not, ca- we're not culpable. What it means is that he's come to show us how to live that way as opposed to the way that we would live without all this if we didn't have grace for grace. The Old Testament and the New Testament are one big gracious gift to us. And the Old Testament's grace helps us to understand what Jesus did in the midst of that. It was grace for grace. And to a worshiper through Jesus' eyes, that baby matters. If you're learning anything at all, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't before, because I want to keep coming to you and driving you crazy with this stuff. Okay? See you next time, kids. Bye. Just in songs.